everybody, welcome and thank you for listening to our brand new podcast, Talking Automotive with Mark and John. My name is John Sinclair and my co-host, Mark Pellevestra. Mark, welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thanks for having me along and looking forward to this, uh, this series that we're putting together and adding some value to the automotive industry from an open dialogue perspective. Mark, it's, it's a really tough time for the industry at the moment. Uh, we're seeing all businesses under a huge amount of pressure. Absolutely. COVID-19 presents a whole new world of challenges for everybody. Customers, dealers, supply chain, OEMs. The industry is going to change. There's no doubt about it. The industry here in Australia was going through significant change already. So some brands will be stronger than others with how fast they can ramp up and get stock to the country when the demand comes back on stream again. But that's only just one element. There's a whole other element of buyer behaviour. Who's going to buy? What are they going to buy? When are they going to buy? How are they going to buy? So there's lots of things that are about to happen and this COVID-19 bump in the road is going to shake out a whole heap of different behaviours, which we need to see and get some key opinions as to what those behaviours will be. Yeah, I think it's pretty scary, Mark. This COVID-19 is a real curveball coming in and it's, uh, it's impacted everybody in the business through dealers, OEMs, manufacturers, uh, even all the, as you say, the supply chain guys and people in insurance, finance. Do you have any ideas in your mind of what people can do at the moment to try and get through this, specifically looking at dealers? March saw 24 months straight of decline in the auto industry, 24 months. So that's the market system has been adjusting down since 2017. It's 18, 19, and we've just seen now 20. It just kept moving down and down and down. And this is a bigger shock in a market that was going through a longer-term correction. Now, that longer-term correction, what was causing that? And this is where there's been a lot of conjecture around uh, pre-reported cars in the deal network. Businesses have been cleaning up their, uh, and they've been they've needed to do that because profitability has dropped. The downside of that is as that stock clears and there's no new stock arriving, when it ramps up to get to uh, have demand again, that there'll be a gap between old inventory before the new inventory can, inventory can turn up. So, so right-sizing and cleaning up and getting the house in order is critical. And this is where if you look at uh, some of the great car sales data, where there's the listings for demos has actually increased, where they're, they're clearing out a lot of those pre-reported demo cars. So these are the opportunities right now, get the house in order. And a lot of that's already been happening. Just didn't have, what hasn't helped is this absolute stop in people coming in to buy cars. Because what the behavior that has changed is mobility. On the flip side, and there's good to see some good car sales data, is that people are actually still searching online. So there's the behavior of changing, of, of, of taking some time out to actually look for a car, not necessarily going out to buy it straight away, but now this process of consideration is, is bigger because people, consumers have time to look online to see what's, what's out there. And this is where the digital presence is so critical. The digital story from the OEM to the dealer and the customer journey from when the customer goes to the OEM's website, dealer's website, the car sales listing, and any other channels that they use to list their media, list their vehicles. So the digital journey is a critical piece. And the other part that's so important is the uh, response times. There's plenty of time to, people got time on their hands to go do some inquiring online. If they send inquiries, it's that whole get onto that lead should be within 10 minutes, preferably. Now, some brands have a two-hour or four-hour uh, KPI to respond. Mark, you spoke about uh, cars in it, uh, being the shortage of cars, but there's also going to be a shortage of parts. Do you think this is going to have an impact, and do you think this is going to have an impact on servicing of vehicles? Service is a grudge expenditure. No one sort of brags about, I can't wait to go get my car serviced. But service is a must. And this is, and, but uh, what we know is parts can get here quicker than, say, an automobile. So there, if there's a shortage globally, 
then there's a challenge from the original OE, from the original source plants. But the beauty with parts, at least, you can get them in quickly uh, with air freight, more so than you can move cars in and out with uh, very slow uh, ships that will be full and, uh, and, and challenging to get spots on those ships. Yeah, it's a really good point that it's, you know, so there's going to be less impact on servicing. There's going to be more impact on, on shortage of cars and that. So, so that's probably going to push your used car sales and, and push that side of the business. Where do you think the opportunities are for, for dealers and OEMs short term? And you're spot on, John. We, we saw this with the GFC. Uh, used car prices drop right about now. Everything drops because demand drops away. No one's got money. Everyone's concerned about their financial state. So the first thing you do, you, you batten down the hatches and stop spending. But that doesn't stay last forever. So what we'll see now is a short-term drop in used car prices. But getting back to that whole supply thing again, once the sup- demand kicks back in again, supply will be constrained and used car prices will go up. Good quality, low kilometre used cars will always be good news. The other challenge that we've seen in the last two years, as the new car volumes have dropped, low kilometre used car prices have remained very strong. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Traditional short cycling has slowed as far as the not-for-profit organisations, even the rental car companies. Demand for those vehicles uh, is, is still quite strong, but there's not enough supply for them. The rental car market used to be around about 50,000 cars a year. That's how many used to go through that short cycling space. It's actually increased. It's increased over 60,000 now. So that's still not a lot of cars in a 1.1 million car market. So the perception is that there's a lot of rental cars. There's not. The shift to five-year warranties, I believe, is starting to slow that short cycling as well. Keeping a car for five years makes a lot of sense because you've got coverage, you've got peace of mind for any hiccup, you've only got the cap price service to worry about. So this is where the used car side of it will show that those used cars will still prop up quite strongly because there won't be a lot of of low kilometre used cars coming back onto the market. So those cars will be strong. And this is where the demos will clear and the demos will still be fairly strong. Not as, as strong as a new car, but still as uh, it'll be, they'll be seen as a very good value. But the opportunity there is how can you generate used car stock that is two years old, that has, uh, is, is still in very good condition? That's the opportunity in the used car space. Mark, if you're sitting as a dealer now, you've buttoned down the hatches, everything's cut back, your service workshop is working at 50%. Most of your sales guys are sitting at home working remotely. What would be the things that you would put in place to make sure that you could best optimise that time when we start to come out of COVID-19? So engaging, whether it be even service and after sales, it's the same thing. You need to be having a conversation with them that you're here, you're open, and it's, and it's really good to see those dealers that are proactive on LinkedIn and other, and other, other social media with their customers just letting them know, hey, we're here. These are some of the services that we offer. Having that conversation, having a really good website and having value in that website where people come to and actually want to have a look to see what you've got, other, other social media that you're putting out there as well. They want it to be very part of that community. So these are the key elements that they've got to start in readiness for when the market kicks back in. Those that are just sitting and waiting and waiting for the market to kick will be left behind. So from a, from a stock perspective, would you as a dealer be ordering stock at this stage? Do you think it's a big risk to start looking at stock and how you, you're stocking? Now, this is different going forward. Like you would, you would assess where you're at versus your normal rate. You would then look to see your, your profile, what are, the, what are your age cars, all the, all the basics of inventory. It's really tricky to see what, what the next couple of months would be. You, but you'd still need to make sure you have a plan to have a supply of inventory that you know you can confidently sell. You'd probably be more conservative with what you're, uh, what you're ordering, but you'd want to make sure you've still got something. And, uh, and if you're bold and you're, you're looking at what, what products are conservative products that people will need, you know, if, you, if you look at uh, things like the supermarkets and you know, the basics of toilet paper going, 
there's a run, there's a run on toilet paper, there's a run on pasta, all the all the very uh, mainstream products that you just take for granted. Is this the time that high end products maybe contract, but your mainstreams are stronger? That's yet to be seen. But usually, in, when times are good, risks are taken. When times are bad, consumers go to more conservative. So this may be an opportunity for the uh, for the for the more mainstream brands to actually have uh, somewhat of a, uh, a success. Yeah, I think it always depends. Your ability to be proactive depends on your your cash flow, your strength of your cash flow. So the more cash flow you got, the more you've got a better ability to take some risks and, and get some get some stock in. But that's that's something you're going to have to look at and and look at the strength of the business to be able to do that. Okay, Mark, we've had a really interesting discussion today. I think it's been interesting things have come out in the topics. Uh, I think to give a final wrap, can you identify the two or three key things that have come out of our discussion today? Well, it's interesting, John, because uh, the three key elements that come into play here is if you look at the channel specifically from a dealer perspective, it's the 101 stuff. It's the really focusing on costs. If, if revenues and incomes are constrained because of the behavior of customers not coming in, it's really focusing on getting those costs down. Inventory is everything and inventory planning, but also making sure you've got a plan going out of this because you need to still have a horizon more than just the current month. So really being focused on that inventory, the forward availability workout for your vehicles, new, used and also the parts inventory, but also that used car opportunity specifically. We know from all other recessions, when you come out, there isn't a supply of local under used cars. And this is something where car share can present an opportunity or even some of these dealer-based rental programs to create some inventory. And there's some products out there that can help you with that. And we'll have that, some information at future, future podcasts on that and how you can actually do that. But used car supply line, the second takeaway is your digital footprint. What are you doing right now to make sure your digital story, because if people are coming, if they're spending their time online, they're looking at social media, they're looking at all of the different elements. You can't just be one dimensional. There's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's TikTok. So these are the ones that you really need to make sure that you've got a, and even Twitter, that you're still exposed in all of those channels. And the third one is to make sure that you've actually got a marketing plan in play now. The biggest risk is that you shut up shop totally and don't do anything. There are cost-effective ways and it links into the digital side, but also even just engaging in your local community. The local IGAs are doing very, very well right now. I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody for listening. Great to have you with us. We're going to be posting this podcast every week. So if you like what you heard, it would be great if you follow us and we can notify you of future broadcasts. And give us feedback. Are there any topics you'd like to hear? Are there any issues you'd like us to discuss? Uh, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Hope to improve as we go. This is the end of our first brand new podcast and we've enjoyed sharing our information with you. Thank you very much. Bye.